guys, welcome to Chocolate Sweets and thank you so much for stopping through my channel. Your support is always highly appreciated. Today we're doing a book review on Family of Lies by Mary Monroe. Um, you guys know she is the same author um, that did the God Don't Like Ugly book series and various others. I'm a huge fan of her, so I always read her books when they come out. This book... Um, came out earlier this year i think at the end of last year um if i can yeah it came out at the end of, of last year it's called the family of lies um let me read the inside of the book for you so you can see uh before we get started it, it, it states after growing up in poor texas vera lomax used every gold digging trick in the book to land a rich husband now living in the lap of luxury in San Francisco, her only job is to fawn over her much older husband. So it's been easy for her to balance a life of shopping and affairs with younger men with a major secret. The 16-year-old bribery of one of her husband's mistresses to keep her pregnancy under wraps. Vera figures that a little hush money every month will ensure her husband's fortune is hers alone. Unfortunately for Vera, Sarah Cooper is the child Kenneth Lomax always wanted. When the father she never knew shows up at her mother's funeral to claim her, it's a fairy tale journey from the ghetto to the mansion on the hill. But Sarah's life is not as carefree as her father wants it to be. Because Sarah knows from the start that her stepmother is a two-faced as they come and after losing all the family she has ever known she wants a life that's richer than what vera's got planned for her neither woman can be sure who will win kenneth's heart and fortune but as vera and sarah scheme to get what they want everyone they know will be choosing sides taking chances and gambling it all out gambling it all to come out on top now first thing i'm going to say about this book the book is 400 and like 20 pages from front to back. It is a very thick book. Um, it's kind of large print, so I guess that's why it's so many pages. However, to me, the book was so long in telling the story. It was so many stories you had to keep up with. First, you had to get Vera's story. Then you had to get what was going on with Kenneth Lomax, which was her husband. Then it went from that story to uh, when he was having the affair with Sarah's mother. Then it left that story and went to when Sarah moved in. Then it left that story and it went to, all, to one of Vera's affairs. Then it went to everybody was just scheming in the entire book. From Kenneth to Vera to Sarah... So Kenneth, Vera, and Sarah were the main characters. So every chapter was named after Kenneth, Vera, or Sarah. And they all was telling their version of what was going on at the particular time. So if that makes sense. One would thought one wouldn't know something and the other one would know it. So that's one thing about the book. Um, the second thing about the book is that... Um, it was a really long read for me. I just had I, can't, I had to put it down, come back to it, put it down, come back to it. But overall, I mean, you just wanted to get through the book. I, I guess the reason why I read the book from start to finish, it took me almost a month to read this book. I kept it on my nightstand. I'm going to pick it up and read a little, a little bit every night before I went to bed. And usually I finish, finish books in a couple days. Um, but this book took a really long time. Um, and then toward the end, um, uh, Sarah, which is Kenneth's son that he had, for, I mean daughter, I'm sorry, that he had with one of his affairs that he thought that Vera didn't know about and which she did and she was paying the hush money. So all the things that Vera thought she was getting away with and that Kenneth was going to never find out about, actually Kenneth hired a private investigator who was actually a good friend, found out everything. So just when she thought, you know, she was getting away with stuff, she really got away with nothing. And in the end, she ended up with nothing. And she married, I think Kenneth was 25 years or something like that, older than she was. So she was in her, she was really, really young when she met Kenneth. And she bribed her way into that. And 
you know, Kenneth got sick and died and didn't leave her anything. Mm -hmm. He left everything to Sarah. But Sarah ended up being um, conniving and marrying an older guy as well. And then realized she didn't love that guy and then fell in love with another guy. And then ended up wanting to be with him. Um, so, again, it's a really long book. But if you have the patience, it's a two and a half out of five um stars i give it she has written better books um but this could have actually been chopped up into a two-part series i think um because maybe she will write another one to tell what happened to sarah after her dad died and left her this big fortune um yeah so that was the book review on family of lies if you guys have any other questions about the book just drop me a um Comment below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. So until um, my next book review, because I'm behind, I'm going to read. Um, it's another chapter, Ultimate Betrayal, um, which is by Kimberly Lawson Roby. You know, I love all those books. This is book 13 of the Curtis um, of the Curtis series. So, you know, you guys, I'm in love with that. So she has a new one coming out next month. So I got to hurry up and get that one read. And, of course, I will be coming back with a book review on that. You guys be blessed and toodles.